Well, hello, uh, kinesiology students. This is Mr. Krenna here, and I'm trying to show you some of the muscles that you need to know today. Uh, trying to use the diagram here and explain them to you. Uh, movements, groupings, and uh, things that you should know as a kinesiology student uh, about uh, muscle anatomy. Uh, if you note on the chart here behind me, the uh, blacked out sections are muscles that you may uh, get at a, at, a, at a university level, but uh, we don't expect you to know at the high school level. So if you're wondering why I'm skipping them, uh, that's why. And if you uh, really want to look into them, uh, feel free. But uh, this is what we're going to go through today. Also note that on, the, uh, on my left over here, that side of your uh, body is noted as a, a more superficial uh, look. And then on the right, my right over here, it is a uh, deep, uh, look into your muscles. So we had to cut away some in order to see a few of the muscles. Ready? Let's go. So the first muscle uh, you see at the top there, uh, some of the facial muscles, the first one is your orbicularis oculi. And your orbicularis oculi is really the muscle that squeezes your eyes closed. Blinking is a uh, not a uh, uh, forced reflex, it's an automatic reflex, but when you physically try to close your eye, that's your orbicularis oculi, and it just goes around uh, your eye socket in, uh, in general. Another facial muscle, these are your two major uh, jaw uh, elevators, and it is going to be your temporalis and your masseter. Your temporalis is a little bit more uh, near the top, a little bit superior, and it is going from your mandible up to your temporal bone. The masseter is going from uh, your mandible up to the uh, mastery process uh, of your mandible up to your temporal bone as well. The masseter is the larger of the two. Okay, so, uh, and, and another way to remember this is uh, the masseter is involved in what's called mastication, and that's the process of chewing. Um, so the masseter is there, and it's pound for pound one of the strongest muscles in your body because you chew so often and strongly, and it's one of the most uh, pound for pound, uh, most dense muscles you have. Going a little bit more inferior, we have your sternocleidomastoid, one of my favorite muscle names, sternocleidomastoid, and it is your neck muscle. It's a major neck flexor, and it is uh, going to be involved in uh, a lot of uh, your, your neck movements. And uh, just like it sounds, your sternum, uh, your clavicle and the mastoid process of your uh, of your mandible is the uh, connecting points for that muscle, hence hence the name. So if you squeeze your, your neck or flex your neck, uh, that's your sternocleidomastoid there. Uh, next, you have your trapezius. It's really an an, uh, sorry a posterior muscle. We can see a little bit of on, on the anterior side though. So if you are going to be involved in elevating your shoulders, that is going to be uh, your trapezius doing that. Uh, it's also involved in retraction and depression of your shoulders too. We have different fibers uh, on the posterior side, but uh, that's your, your trapezius muscle right at the top here and involved in shoulder elevation. Next, let's look at your deltoid. So your deltoid is your major shoulder muscle. It's gonna be involved in arm extension and arm uh, abduction. Uh, it's the major, the prime mover of your upper arm uh, around your humerus bone, okay? There's different heads to it. Don't worry about that too much, but you do have uh, more of an anterior, more of a, of a lateral head to it. So the anterior is your elevator um, and the, uh, your extender, sorry I should say, and the, uh, the lateral is more your uh, abductor. Let's next go to your subscapularis, which is also involved in the shoulder. The subscapularis is part of your rotator cuff group, and uh, your rotator cuff is gonna be involved in internal and uh, external rotation at the shoulder. And the subscapularis is the muscle that's involved in the internal rotation. It's the only one that's involved in internal rotation uh, or medial rotation. Uh, the other three are gonna be involved in the external rotation. And you can only see them on the posterior side, so we'll look at those later. But the subscapularis is involved in internal rotation. It's within your scapula. And uh, it's gonna articulate your scapula into uh, the head of your humerus, and hence uh, when you contract it, that's uh, the internal rotation there. 
Next, you have your pecs. The two pecs are here. You have your pectoralis minor. Uh, that's the one that's probably not as uh, commonly uh, known. And it's really involved in uh, shoulder protraction. So when I curl my shoulders in like that, that is my pectoralis minor that's doing that action primarily. Okay. Now our pectoralis major is more superficial and uh, most of us know that one as our pecs and that's really what's going to be involved in arm uh, adduction and uh, it's also in, uh, in uh, flexion of, of the arm as well. But our pectoralis major is that major arm uh, adductor. Um, so in, in two, when you like do something like a, a chest press or a push up, um, you know, you're doing this motion, but watch your uh, humerus bone. It's always involved in adduction when you do that motion. So, and note that the pectoralis minor is deep and the pectoralis major muscle is superficial. Uh, let's go over here to the serratus anterior. The serratus anterior muscle is involved really just in stabilizing your scapula whenever you do a back movement or a shoulder rotation. It's really gonna keep your scapula from really moving around your back a lot. It's just, uh, you, we don't generally see it on our, on our bodies, uh, but it is there and it's an important uh, for our scapula to be stabilized during uh, shoulder rotation. Let's go to your uh, rectus abdominis. Uh, your rectus abdominis is your, your abs. Obviously we know, kind of know those. You have your linea aspera going right down the middle and there's uh, four compartments generally to your uh, rectus abdominis. And of course it's involved in flexion and it's gonna be flexi flexing at the spine. So when you, when you curl over, um, you're going to be using your rectus abdominis. I'm going to skip down a little bit to your obliques. So you have an external oblique, and that's really on the outside, the more um, lateral side of your torso, and it's really involved in this lateral bending movement. Okay, side to side, that's really your external oblique that is doing that motion. You also have an internal oblique. Your internal oblique is really more for, it's also involved in lateral bending, but it's also going to be for this rotational uh, movement here at the torso. Okay, so that's more your internal oblique. Internal oblique, just like it sounds, is, is much is deeper, and then your external oblique is more superficial, and uh, your rectus abdominis is really the one, only uh, one that's on the, the, the very anterior side of your torso. Uh, the arms are here, but before we get there, the latissimus dorsi, this is really a back muscle, and you can kind of see it if you are, uh, you know, you're involved in exercise, it's kind of that V uh, that you get to your back when you, it's a major prime um, uh, arm uh, retractor, but uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the posterior side. Okay, here we go, let's get to the arm. Uh, so we have a few, uh, a lot of us know the biceps brachii, and that is your, your, your biceps. Uh, it's going to be involved in arm uh, flexion at the elbow. Flexion at the elbow is your biceps uh, brachii. And uh, it is, uh, it's got two heads. That's why it is called your biceps by me too. Then you have your uh, brachialis, okay? Your brachialis. Now, your brachialis is kind of that unknown or uh, lesser uh, known one to the biceps. But that muscle is really important. Your brachialis is really going to be involved in flexion at the elbow as well. Uh, the big difference is that it's involved in flexion when you pronate. So when I supinate and flex at the elbow, uh, this is the biceps brachii. Now watch if I pronate, right? Supinate, hold in both suit, pronate. When I pronate, and flex at the elbow. The prime mover is now my brachialis. So anytime you're lifting with your hands pronated, that is your brachialis muscle. And you can feel that easily if you, if you do uh, supinate and then flex. And then go ahead and put your fingers inside of that uh, bicep there and then rotate to a pronation. You're gonna feel that brachialis muscle uh, hopefully popping out there. Um, so yeah, your brachialis. And then I'm gonna to jump to your uh, brachioradialis, uh, which is uh, more primarily in your forearm, 
but it is also involved in flexion at the elbow. And it's really involved in flexion at the elbow when you partially pronate. So supinate, pronate, and then a partial pronation. So think of holding a hammer and then uh, flexing at the elbow. That is ma uh, the major mover is your brachioradialis. All right, so your brachioradialis is that uh, prime mover when it is uh, that hammering motion, that partial uh, pronation, okay? Uh, your pronator teres is there as well, and your pronator teres is, uh, just like it sounds, is going to be your major uh, pronator muscle, okay? primary, primary movement um, uh, and, and, and of that muscle is just that pronation, and it's, it's your major uh, pronator there. Okay, let's move down a little bit more. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So the deep wrist and uh, finger flexors are here. This is your forearm. There are many, many muscles involved in your uh, wrist flexion and wrist extension as well, but uh, we're not gonna go through all the individual ones. We'll save that for your uh, first and second year anatomy courses next year. Uh, so that, the, just, just know them as your finger flexors, okay? All right. So that's the basic upper body anterior muscles. So now we're moving down to the uh, lower body and we are looking at the leg. So first muscle I want to make note of here is your uh, tensor fascia latte. It is, it is my favorite uh, muscle name by far. It sounds like something you order at Starbucks. The tensor fascia latte is uh, a major hip uh, abductor. So it's going to move your leg, you move your foot away from the mid midline. So if I was here and I was doing this motion, this is my tensor fascia latte here, moving my leg, abducting my leg. It has this IT band, okay? Maybe you've heard of that, the iliotibial band. Um, it is uh, connected to the tensor fascia lata, but it's not a muscle itself. But I have uh, included it just so you can visualize it. It extends all the way down to uh, the tibia, but it's going to be a, uh, a long tendon attached to the tensor fascia lata. Okay, uh, next let's move to your iliopsis. So this muscle here is your iliopsis. And it is a major uh, hip flexor. So a hip flexor. So when I do this kind of movement here, where I'm lifting my knee up and flexing at the hip, shortening this angle, that is my iliopsis, okay? Prime uh, uh, mover of my hip, not one that we know about a whole lot, but we do this movement all the time when we run, when we walk, and your iliopsis is a deeper muscle that's really, really involved with that movement. Next, we are moving to the leg uh, adductors, and the adductors here are your pectineus. We also have your adductor longus. We also have your adductor magnus. Uh, you can see it's more deep on this side. This is your adductor magnus, and then your gracilis, okay? Um, so it's helpful to know those in order. So you go from your pectineus, and then your adductor longus, adductor magnus, and then your gracilis here. And those are all involved in leg adduction. So if I do this movement here, where I'm bringing my leg in towards the midline, all four of those muscles are involved in the adduction of your hip, okay? Next, uh, we'll just go to the sartorius over here. So the sartorius is actually, it's got, it's famous for being the longest muscle in your body. It goes all the way from your pelvis and extends all the way down around to your tibia. It's a very, very long muscle. And it's really involved in the internal rotation of your leg. Sometimes it's involved in adduction as well. But if I do this uh, kind of knee inward rotation, then that is, in this internal rotation, is uh, primarily your sartorius. 
Next, we have the very famous quadriceps group. And the quadriceps group is uh, four muscles that uh, combine to uh, extend at the knee. So if I am doing this motion here where I am extending at the knee, this is, this is my quadriceps right here, okay? So these four are involved. They may be hard to see. Uh, I apologize for the, uh, for the screen here. But here we go. The, the one that you have to remember uh, kind of as a standalone is your rectus femoris. And the one that is most superficial, the one you would feel most at the, at the if, you, if you extended at the leg and felt that muscle, then you would, uh, you would feel really your rectus femoris, the one that's most superficial. You also have a biceps femoris on the posterior side of your leg. So don't get those two mixed up. This is your rectus femoris. And then you have your vastus uh, group, like the three vastus. So the vastus are your vastus lateralis. It's the most lateral. They made this one pretty easy for you. And then we have the vastus medialis on the medial side. And then we have the vastus intermedius which we have to cut away the rectus femoris because it's deep to the rectus femoris, but that this is your vastus intermedius, okay? So the vastus group, just easy to remember, uh, lateral, intermedius, and then the, the vastus medialis there. And they all combine to do that same uh, extension at the knee. Very powerful muscle because of those four quad, four combined uh, to make that extension movement. Very, very strong. Okay, and then lastly, at the uh, anterior part of your leg, uh, we have two muscles just to note. Uh, one is your tibialis anterior. Uh, so your tibialis anterior is that uh, muscle that is going to be picking up your, uh, your toes or your foot and really involved in that dorsiflexion. So the main dorsiflexor is your tibialis anterior. So if I had my leg here, and then I pointed my toe up, this is dorsiflexion, what's happening there? You're contracting your tibialis anterior. Easy to remember, it's your tibia, and it's on the anterior side. And um, if you've gone skiing a lot, kind of hold that position, you know that the front of your shin is kind of sore, that's that tibialis anterior that's acting pretty sore. Um, and and uh, if you have shin splints, that tibialis anterior, that's the muscle that's kind of being, um, uh, it's breaking down a little bit, so uh, that, that's your shin splint uh, muscle there, there too. Uh, your fibularis or peroneus longus um, is on the uh, lateral side of your lower leg, and it is involved in uh, a movement that's uh, kind of unique. Um, you are uh, really going to be turning the bottom of your foot out and it's really that eversion movement. So your fibularis longus is involved in eversion. So if you've ever had an ankle sprain, usually you invert your foot, but when you uh, evert your foot, you're pointing the bottom of your foot away. Hope I can do this. Pointing the bottom of your foot away from the midline. And that's really your peroneus longus or fibularis longus that is doing that motion. And you can tell where it is on the lateral side. If you contract it, it's pulling on your foot and then attaching to your uh, tibia as well. So there's the anterior muscles. You are a walking textbook. You have all of these muscles in your body and you can move them. You can flex them. You can, in some cases, feel where they are and uh, to me, that's the best way to study these muscles is to look at them, look at the chart, know what they do, move them, and go through it in your mind exactly what the muscles are that you're moving. Hope this helped, and we'll see you on the posterior side. Thanks.